Hi there, I wanted to give you an update on uh, Air Manager 3.0. Uh, one of the features we're adding is user defined properties. What this does, it is allows the user to define properties when they're using an instrument in a panel, and these values can be adjusted and saved from uh, uh, flight to flight, uh, and they will be able to customize an instrument for that user's needs and not have to be done with Lua scripting. Now let me show you the a little bit about the uh, what we've done here uh, by showing you the API. Let me show you the, some of the user properties that are available. Basically, these properties can either be an integer, in which case user property add integer, you give it a name, um, which is a string, and then a minimum value, uh, a maximum integer value, and then a default value, and then a description, which is a string that prompts the user to know what they're setting. Uh, we can also do that with real numbers. We can do that with Booleans, in which case it's a name, default value, true or false, and then a description. Uh, string, you can do that, the default value and uh, description. Now, you might be able to use that, for example, if you wanted to uh, have, a, let's say, a nameplate on an airplane. You could uh, use a default value, and then the user could change that and put their in number in so that that text string would appear on the, user, on the uh, aircraft ID plate. That's just a simple example, or, or possibly some other uh, text that would identify, uh, for example, the model of the instrument or something, if you wanted to add that and you wanted it to be changeable. Um, then we have the enumeration, which you put a name and a list of possible values and a default value and a description. And when you need to access these at runtime in your, in your Lewis script, you just uh, call user property get and then the property name, which is whatever type you have. It doesn't matter what kind it is. It'll still return the value depending on that. So let me show you this at, in, in action uh, on a, a script that I was working on. Uh, this is uh, the generic instrument. Now, if I just I'll, I'll show you the script first and show you what what it says, how it works. Uh, this was the script that I did to make a uh, variable color arcs on an airspeed indicator um, so that they could be customized for a particular airplane. Of course, every airplane has different performance, but we were having to make graphics uh, for every different kind of airplane. This would provide generic instruments that I plan to do a complete set on uh, that would have user-defined properties. And we could do that for all sorts of things. For example, uh, engine instruments uh, could have user-defined properties. Uh, uh, really, the sky's the limit. But the airspeed indicator is a good example because that change radi changes radically from airplane to airplane. Different stall speeds, different maximum flap speeds, different uh, red line uh, V&E speeds, and so on. So here, here's just a quick run through how this looks. I used, a, we have one variable that, and these were in the earlier version, you had to just panel background equals, and I put a true or false in this case. Are the screws visible, the bezel visible, what units we use, the red line speed. You just had to enter those constants. You had to use, get a, a text editor, open the Lewis script. It required some, some scripting ability. This eliminates that completely. For example, panel back, user property add boolean. The, the prompt is show panel. The default value is true, and it says show the panel background. Uh, and then when it needs to get that value, it sets panel background equal to the user property get panel back, which is, as you can see, the same variable that I've defined with the uh, property add. Then we go on down here to screws visible, the same thing, uh, bezel visible, both Booleans. Then let's look at one here that's a, an enumeration unit property. It says user property at enumerated or enum. The speed units is the prompt or the it says uh, or the, uh, the the variable name, the property name it says uh, knots comma miles per hour. So those are the two values. Knots is the default value and then select units displayed is the prompt and here it says uh, here I used a conditional if statement FIF if the user property get units property is equal to knots, if it is knots, true. If it's not knots, it returns false. So we'll be setting units knots either to true or false. And let's look at VNE redline. This is a, an integer example. We got user property uh, add integer. 
uh, name redline speed, and then we have a minimum value possible of 20, a maximum of 260. I just took the lowest and highest tick on the airspeed indicator. And then we have 220 as a default value. In the prompt, enter red line. I put V and E, velocity never exceed, the red line speed. And we do the same thing for the, the caution, the, the, the beginning of the caution, or the top of the green to bottom of the caution. I put NO for no normal operating. Here I used 160 for that. Uh, normal property, which would be the normal operating range. Um, the stall property, The this is the bottom of the white arc, the top of the white arc. And you can see, and then for multi-engine airplanes, I put a Boolean in here. Do you want to show the red radio, which is, the, of course, the minimum controllable airspeed engine out? Uh, yes or no. And then a value. And then the blue radio, do you want to show that? Again, a Boolean, true or false. And a value. Entered again as an integer. So let's take a look at this instrument and see how it, how it looks. What I'm going to do is close this. And here, here's the, uh, let's go to a panel. Now I have a panel here. I have, I'm going to remove this. I had already put one in there to test it. And let's go ahead and say, uh, add instrument. And here's my generic airspeed. Um, I guess I don't have a, uh, I, it, it should show up, but I don't, ha it's, it's uh, here, but I don't have a uh, preview in there. So if there was a preview, you would be looking at the panel layout here. Uh, with that one instrument up here. But let's go ahead and show that panel. Uh, and when we show it, you see there's the default values that we just talked about, the default values in the, uh, the uh, 220 at the top and so on, the values that were in there. Now what I want to show you, see the panel back is visible, the bezel is visible, the screws are visible, the red line visible, blue line visible, there's the bottom of the white arc top, and of course the green arcs. Okay, now let's close this. Okay, and we'll close that. And we'll say, let's go down here and select the instrument. Now here we go, generic airspeed adjustable speed arcs. Okay, now here are the here are the all the properties that we've added. And it's you know, notice before it used to just start with Windows proper Windows preferences. Okay, but now we have a new area here that says properties. And we have show panel, and you can see there's the prompt, show the background panel. And below that, there's the Boolean. It has a check mark for true or false. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, turn the panel off. Show the screws. I'm going to say, turn the screws off. Bezel. I'm going to show the bezel still. And here's the, the enumeration. You can see it gives me a pop-up menu. And, and basically, that was just to, to tell it uh, how to convert the knots to match the scale we have on there. So whatever you have displayed on the instrument, you would want to make that match up. In this case, we'll use knots. There's a red line speed. I'm going to change that from 220 down to 200. Uh, yellow arc. And now you see these little pop-ups. These things will change the speed too, but they'll only go to the limits, like we said, 20 to 260, and you couldn't go above that. Uh, I'm going to add uh, start of the yellow arc at 180. I'm going to bring that up a little. And the green arc, the start of the lowest value of the green arc, which is VSS1, which is the um, clean uh, stall speed, we'll put, uh, let's put uh, 60. And the start of the white arc, let's use uh, 50. So there'll only be 10 knots difference. The end of the white arc, the highest value of the white arc, which is the Max flaps extended extended speed. We'll lower that down to 100 knots, and we're going to turn the red radial off. We're going to turn the blue radial off, and we're going to show the instrument again. And now you can see 200 knots max. There's 180. There's uh, the bottom at uh, 50 knots, and the bottom of the green at 60 knots. So that's how easy that is. Let's uh, let's go back. Uh, let's close that. And let's just go back to our, our thing again, and we'll turn the, turn the uh, it's so easy to do this. It'll be easy for any user to customize instruments. We'll turn the bezel and the panel and the screws back on. We'll uh, show the, the blue radial and the red radial again. But in this case, let's change the red radial to one. Uh, let's make it at 85. And let's make the blue radial at 120. 
and we'll come back here and we'll show our instrument. And you can see there's the blue run 20 for the blue, 85 for the red radial. The screws in the panel are visible. So you get the idea. I think it's pretty powerful. I think it's going to be especially nice to be able to, for example, instead of having on a multi-engine airplane, having two separate uh, tachometers or oil pressures, we'll be able to just build one instrument and have uh, uh, properties left or right and so on. Engine one, two, three, four, whatever, and be able to set all those parameters. Uh, we'll be able to customize, let's say, text areas. If we have text or we have uh, other limitations, uh, maybe certain things that we would want, like, as I said, the airspeed, the, uh, the nameplate for the airplane with the in number uh, or the uh, registration number, uh, that can all be, uh, can be uh, customized by the end user without any need to enter any any of the, uh, the the numbers. In fact, we're going to have some pay panels available in version 3.0. Uh, we're going to have a version that's going to be free, but you will have to buy the panels, and they won't be access to the programming. There will only be access uh, to lay out the instruments and resize them to make panels, but these will be purchased uh, so you'll have the software free, but you'll have to buy the panels that you want. And this may be suitable for a lot of users, but this will allow them to do some customization of those instruments. And I'd like to build a, a generic kind of generic set for single engine and multi-engine airplanes and for um, uh, jets and so on and have some customizable numbers so that you could set it up for a specific airplane you want to fly. And now you wouldn't have the exact cockpit uh, representation, but you would be able to customize uh, the numbers, uh, arcs on, for example, the engine instruments or whatever. So that's where we are. thought I'd share that. I think it's a pretty exciting uh, development for Air Manager to have uh, these user-defined properties. Uh, and uh, I'm anxious to see how some of our uh, more uh, advanced users are going to put this to work. I'm sure there are things we haven't thought of yet that are going to be uh, possibilities. Thanks a lot for checking in. Watch for future updates.